All right. Good morning, uh, members of the board. Good morning, Charm TV and those who are present and watching uh, from home. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will now begin. Please take this opportunity to turn off or mute all of your electronic devices. Don't be that person. Uh, the board is now in session. We do have two preliminary matters. Uh, the first one is Chairman Matriciani is, uh, Matriciani is excused from today's hearings. So in his absence, Commissioner Templeton will be serving as acting chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, also, number, uh, item number three on the violations docket is postponed, and that is Manjeet Inc. 3, trading as the liquor store socialized, 6130 Bel Air Road, Class BD7 Beer Wine Liquor License Violation of Rule 4.20, little c, uh, 2 little i. That will be scheduled shortly. Moving into regular items, uh, number one, Kevin Francis Curley, first, fa first fatty MCH LLC, trading as Chicks Premium Kitchen, 1724 Whetstone Way, Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license, request to reopen under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages and Cannabis Article, Section 12-2203, wherein a licensed premises has been closed for at least three consecutive months. Please come forward. Good morning. Can you state your name? Kevin Curley. Okay. Press the, I'm sorry. Press the, oh, press the red button. Kevin Curley. Okay. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make to you the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I see we got a letter on May 10th from um, Mr. Mister on your behalf. What's going on with this? Um, so we closed the business the end of December last year. Um, we just due to hardship, uh, we did renew the license in April and filed for that extension, and we're, we're just reopening. Okay. Um, we have reopened uh, on June 10th, but just uh, without the liquor license, obviously, at okay. this time. All right. Well, based on the letter from May 10th, 2024, from Mr. Mister, um, I do vote to approve your request to reopen this Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Yes, based on materials, the letter from the attorney and testimony, I also vote to approve the request to reopen. Based on the testimony and letter from your attorney, I also approve the request to reopen the subject property. Thank you and good luck to you. Thank you. No, it's up for the record. Uh, please forgive me if I miss uh, if I mispronounce his name. Basilios uh, G. Circus T Circus. Uh, Admirals of Thames, LLC, trading as Waterfront Hotel, 1710 Thames Street, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, violation of Rule 4.18A. Please come forward. Hello, good morning. Can you raise your, is everyone going to testify or are you going to proffer? Um, Anastasia Thomas, Nardangeli, on behalf of the, um, well, I guess it's not the applicant, the, no. <laughs> the, the entity. Um, I've got Cecilia Circus and Darren Mislin here on behalf of Atlas Restaurant Group to provide testimony if needed. Okay. So right now they may testify. Is that what you're going to say? So everybody, please just raise your right hand so we can get sworn in. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us what, what happened when you guys went there on, what was it? Saint March 16th. March 16th. Mm -hmm. Agent Perez, Baltimore City Liquor Board. On March 16th, um, Inspector Tohop and Inspector Jordan were monitoring the Chambrock crawl in the First Point area. At approximately 4.30 p.m., they observed um, the lot adjacent to the Waterfront Hotel being used for sales and consumption of alcoholic beverage of patrons for the Waterfront Hotel. After verifying that the establishment of the hotel service area didn't span to the lot located at 1708 10th Street, uh, we responded to the location at about 6.20, made contact with the manager, Mr. Brandon Webster. Uh, Inspector Jordan explained to Mr. Webster that the outdoor table service had not been granted to the establishment for certain consumption of alcoholic beverage in the area aforementioned. 
Mr. Webster advised that he was under the impression that he could serve patrons seated at the patio as long as all drinks were dispensed from the bar in the interior of the establishment and no the outdoor bar located in this lot. I advise Mr. Webster that an approval from the Bill LLC to expand the outdoor table service area to include 1708 Thames Street must be obtained before any alcoholic beverage could be sold or consumed in this unauthorized space. Okay. Is this going to be an admission or are you contesting this? Admission. 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 Okay. Do you have any questions? No. No questions? Okay. So I guess you can proffer. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say about? I, I'm i proffering that the entity and operation did not, has, has a clean record up till now. Um, this was miscommunications and misunderstanding amongst the manager and the in individuals operating the establishment. There has not been any subsequent violations and they do not intend to violate any of the laws or regulations moving forward. It seems like right after this happened, um, all the patients were moved inside, alcohol was, wasn't yes. served on that location. No. And um, you guys have made some steps to incorporate this, this lot correct yes the correct way correct. we're trying yes. to consolidate it all and, and get that all correct okay we're opening another establishment next door and we're gonna we're attempting to consolidate the lot and we're we just approved that liquor license so where are you guys on that process we're we're waiting for a hearing date to be set for the application to expand the license that was already issued to 1704 which is the other um building and structure to the if you're facing the property to the left to the left of yes of the Right, we're, we're working on the MOU. Okay. All right. Um, any questions, Commissioner? Yeah, so what's, what's the story with the lot? What are you going to do with the lot? Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to appear before the Liquor Board and explain an a attempt to have the liquor license issued to 1704 expanded to cover the lot. So at a hearing for that expansion, we will explain all that we intend to do with the lot. And that is actually a separate applicant, separate entity. Um, Mr. Misslin is the individual applicant for that particular license. Mr. Circus is the, is the individual named on the license that we're First, talking about now, but two separate licenses. This license will not be affiliated with any alcohol sales or the courtyard. Okay, I'm good. Just, in, in just one, somewhat to address it, but consolidation of a lot. Did you sit down with the zoning Yes. Oh, you we explain went through. to them exactly what you plan to do on those lots. Yes, sir. That was taken okay. care of. Just, and just make sure there's no misunderstanding. And this can thank you for saying that. And this this is all relevant to what we're trying to do with 7104. But we're we are not asking to make use of the lot with regard to the license that we're talking about right here. For when we, when we purchased can you the, identify yourself? Yes, please. Vasilia Circus, I'm on the license for Waterfront Hotel. Um, when we purchased the building at Waterfront Hotel, the owners who were operating the business at that time were using that lot, and we were using that lot as well during COVID and all that outdoor dining stuff that was going on. So we were under the misconception that we could still use it, and that's what happened on St. Patty's Day, and we do apologize. Okay, I have no other, no other questions. Anybody else? No. no, no questions. Okay. Um, based on the violation report, the proffer made by counsel, testimony given today, um, I do find there was a violation of Rule 4.18A, um, and that was serving alcohol, alcoholic beverages adjacent to um, the premises without permission from the board. Um, but I do see that cells did cease immediately, um, that the patrons did move inside. Um, the steps have been taken to make sure that that lot is going to be able to be used the right way in the future. Um, so, and because of that, um, I do issue a nominal fee of a hundred dollar fine for that, and give you thirty days to pay that fine. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank based, you. based on materials and testimony uh, provided today, I vote to agree with the chair's findings of violation of Rule 4.18, small a, with a fine of a hundred dollars. I too find for a violation of Rule 4.1 A, little a, on March 16, 2024, for serving alcoholic beverages on the adjacent lot without permission from the liquor board. I also uh, I 
I guess I, I'm be, I'll give you a fine of one hundred dollars also. I'm down. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I believe that's that. Miss Russell. I close it to the record. Board Exhibit One, violation report. Uh, Agent Perez. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'm glad Thank you, you very much. In order. Okay. Great day. One more time. Need spellings. Again, I apologize if I mispronounce the name. Uh, Zanting Charles Co. and Jason Jose Acevedo Rosario, Castle Seafood Inc., trading as Castle Seafood Restaurant, 3720 Poti Street, Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license, violation of Rule 3.12. Violation of Rule 3.08 little a, violation of Rule 3.09 little b, violation of Rule 4.16. Please come forward. Please identify yourself. Uh -huh. Identify yourself. Not good. Excuse no. me. No. Say your name. Yeah. Uh, Jason Acevedo. Okay. No, no. Rosalba Jordan, Inspector. Agent Perez. Okay. Is this going to be an admission to these violations, or are you, are you challenging them? I'm trying to be good. Uh, I'll say. Are, are you saying that you did these violations, or are you saying that you want to challenge them? I did not do all the violations because I don't have too many people okay. Okay. inside. All right. So let's raise your right hand. Okay. Everybody raise your right hand is going to testify. Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Inspector, can you go ahead and start and tell us what happened on that day? Sure. On March 14th, 2024, we arrived at the location at around 4.30. Um, as soon as we approached, we saw uh, maybe about 100 people just standing around outside waiting to get in. Um, we approached and we spoke to the door people, and they didn't have a count. Um, and they didn't know the capacity of the place either. Mm -hmm. Then um, when we walked in, people were uh, smoking hookah and marijuana based on, you know, we could smell it and see it. Um, then we went on to the outside patio where we saw it was extremely overcrowded. There was, uh, I think I, 170 and, uh, is our capacity, but we counted approximately 250 people outside and they were standing around because there wasn't enough seating for all those people and they were uh, carrying drinks and they were bringing them from the inside out to the patio. Um, then we, you know, I spoke to Mr. Acevedo and he agreed to stop the hookah and the marijuana and to uh, stop the people from entering further. So he did agree with that. Uh, then um, Agent Perez and I hung out a little while to see, you know, make sure that he was in compliance. Um, when we heard what sounded like a fight inside of the patio area, um, when we <clears throat> heard that, we approached a, a police officer that was a unit that was just in the area, and they came inside. They broke up the fight. Um, then um, the, you know, the party ended. Uh, people from the inside started coming out, spilling out to the uh, <coughs> parking lot area. Um, they wouldn't disperse. Then those people uh, went on to across the street where there's a park, uh, like a shopping area. They were there and this whole thing took about a few hours. We got there at 4.30. The police weren't able to gain control until 7.30. Um, it was that bad that they had to have the county um, helicopter unit come out to help out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Chairman. You want to step in? Uh, Go ahead. The, the lieutenant, the innocent commander from that day is here to testify if you need him to. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions for our inspector? No, I have no questions. But the only thing I'm saying, I'll stop the club. Uh yeah, I'm going to give you a chance okay. to speak. I just want to know if you have any uh, questions okay. at this time. Okay. And I'm going to let you say anything yeah. that you want to say, okay? Yeah, she, that's she right. Okay. All right. And does anyone else want to testify? Um, would you like to come forward and testify? Do you hear anything from me? Any yeah. yeah, I do want to hear briefly what was going on. Good morning. From your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Julio. I'm assigned to the Southern District. I'm the uh, shift commander for the 3 to 11 shift at nighttime. 
uh, during this incident uh, came out, everything she said was factual, came out uh, as a fight for the, on the law enforcement side. So we got there, there was several hundred people outside. There's so many so that I had to stop answering calls for service in the Southern. I had to go to other districts to ask for officers to come down to help out just due to shortages. And so basically we shut down a bunch of police districts and calls for service in reference to this. Uh, I had to get Baltimore County assets. I had to use Baltimore County Aviation to come out to give us crowd sizes, crowd movements, things of that nature. It took us several hours to get in front of this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone from the community? Are you from the community? I am. Okay. What's your name? My name is Andrea Mayer. Can you state, state it in the mic? My name is Andrea Mayer. Did I'm a Brooklyn some? resident and a Brooklyn business owner. Mm -hmm. This business has been a chronic problem ever since they opened. I really wish you would shut them down. They've been horrible for the neighborhood. Um, I go into a lot of detail, but it should be in the records. I really wish you would consider not giving them their license. I'm begging you not to give them their license. Did Thanks. you see what happened on this date, or were you around on this date? I was not around on this date. Okay. All right. Thank you for your input. Were you there on this date, or did you see what happened on this date, ma'am? You can identify yourself first. My name is Christina Bittner. I work with a group called Action Baybrook. I'm one of the employees. I can only say that we've received numerous complaints from community people, from residents about loud music. And um, one gentleman said his the, f the furniture in his house shakes mm -hmm. at night when they have uh, events. And it's, it's been an ongoing problem, and we'd like to see it taken care of. Okay. I understand. But were you there for this? You no, didn't see what happened on this there. one. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll address that when we, when we make our ruling. You want to come forward? Yes. Go ahead and tell me what you want to tell us about what uh, happened on that day. She was right with everything she's saying. But when I saw so many people coming, coming in, I showed the club down, put everybody out. Because, you know, I did not knew it was going to come that crowd of people. And the uh, hookah was on old side in the patio. And the weed probably smelled was on old side too in the parking lot. You know, there was a lot of people around old side. So by the music, I don't know, because I don't have put in no music because I got a lot of fine actor, so I'm stopping the loud music outside. So I don't know what you're talking about, about the music being loud and shaking. We, we, we can discuss just what happened on um, March the 14th, okay? Yes. So, so we won't address that right now. Okay. Um, so my concern is the inspector said that they did see people smoking marijuana inside. Yeah, but of the we facility. stopping people smoking outside, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop everybody. We go you know, it's a lot of people. We have to be walking. All my security people are trying to stop everybody smoking marijuana. But people so smoking outside, you know, it's still going to smell, going to be smelling, you know what I mean? Because they're smoking in the, outside in the parking lot. And what about this capacity and not having a count, knowing how many people are in there? We do you have got, a capacity uh, of, what, 170 people? No, nah, my capacity is 426. The whole club, yeah. The, the whole, whole club. I'm sorry, the whole building. We now was out of the positive inside mm -hmm. at all. Okay. Because we got like about 200 something in the whole club. Can you address the, ask that? Sure. Part? The capacity the, that was mentioned in my report, it was the outside capacity. Um, okay. Inside, there wasn't a lot of people inside, but outside it was extremely overcrowded in the patio area, so much that there wasn't enough room for everybody to sit. And they were just walking around carrying drinks from the inside out. Have you been back or anybody been back since the day of this violation? Has there been any other complaints or any other issues? I myself haven't been back. No. Any other issues since March? If we can bring Matt up, um, he's the one that deals in the community uh, meetings, and I don't know if they, have they mentioned any other issues? No, no, no other issues. issues. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything else you'd like to say about the violations and no. nothing else? No. Commissioner, you guys have any questions about the yeah. violations? Yeah. Um, for the licensee, do you know that having a liquor license is a privilege? Yeah. Okay. Step up to the mic. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like, I mean, sitting here regards to management inside and outside, because the outside is part of your license. Do you have, 
enough security? Are you looking at adding security? No, we got a lot of security. We had like six, seven security every time. Then yeah. why is why are they having these issues? I mean, are they enforcing? No, they always, the police always go down there. Even I got a small party, like they say a hundred people. They will they always go ask me, so you need help or something? You know, I would talk to them. They will come by. Every time I got something going on down there, they do come by. Yeah, I talk to the police always there. And so there's, there's cooperation with yeah. the police. I'm just looking at these violations that you have to try to have them corrected. So you're not back here again. That's, I always that's, try to do my best. Every time the chair or no, yeah. either one go, I'm on. you know, I always yeah. try. I know you say you try. I'm not being ignorant. I'm just saying you got to do better to take I, care I, of this. I'm doing my best. You do better. Right. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yes, just one thing. The capacity for the for the lot. Yeah. What's the capacity for the lot? Is there a stated capacity for the lot by itself? 170. That's 170? the last time I checked. It was 170. And then, do you, on your estimation, was it more than 170 when you made your inspection? We stopped counting at 250. At 250. Yeah. Okay. I get back to you. Mm -hmm. You see that you have enough security to monitor everything that goes on at the lot. Is that correct? Yes, I try uh, right. most so security I got. Who makes the assessment as to whether or not you need to increase your staff? Are you, you the owner or the manager? Or I'm the manager. Yeah, yeah. manager? Yes. So when you look out and see that lot, there's a lot of folks, and you got six people out there trying to monitor what's going on. Is, do anyone check to see whether or not your instructions are given to the people who are participating at your location is being followed. Who is the person that say, well, they're not doing what we asked them to do. We need to close this down or we need to employ more people so that we can monitor I mean, this. Have you ever said that to yourself? Yeah, I always, like I get more people. See, I know the party is going to be, like I say, big. I bring more people. I always bring a lot of security. They can tell you how many security I always bring. Okay, so so th so let me let me make this clear to you. Um, I think one of our biggest concerns is the use of assets. So when you have helicopters coming from the county, you have the police that have to be at your location for an extended period of time. We know that they have to come down there sometimes. I understand when the business. When we have our inspectors there for what four thirty to seven thirty. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's like you know three hours of time that. Um, because of your establishment. And then when you have um, six other violations that we've had here, and I understand you've made some changes and you've tried to fix some things, um, but you're, you're getting close to the point where we can suspend or revoke your license. And I want you to understand that that's very serious and you're mm -hmm. at that point now. Your leeway has, you probably use almost all of it up. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, I do like that you haven't had any um, other issues since this date. Okay, so I'm ready to, to move forward. Uh, based on the um, violation report, um, the, state, the testimony that was given today by everyone here, um, I do find that you did violate Rule 3.12 um, on March 14, 2024. On that same date, yeah, I see that you did violate, I cite that you do violate Rule 3.08, small a. Also, you did violate Rule 3.09b on March 14, 2024, and also Rule 4.16 on March 14, 2024. Um, I do cite a um, fine of $1,500 per violation, so that's going to be 1,500 times 4. Um, Six thousand dollars. I give you thirty days to pay that. Okay. Yes. Uh, based on material and testimony provided today, I also agree with the chair's findings. A violation of Rule three point twelve, fifteen hundred dollar fine. Violation of Rule three point zero eight a, fifteen hundred dollar fine. Violation of Rule 3.09B, $1,500 fine. And violation of Rule 4.16, uh, $1,500. So I agree with the Chair's findings. And 30 days of pay. 
Also, I find for a violation of Rule 3.12 on March the 14th, 2024, because the police responded to the address, fired some months patrons inside the establishment, and they had to disperse the crowd. Also, I find for a violation of Rule 3.08, little a, on March the 14th, 2024, the establishment was over the posted capacity. Also, I find for Rule 309, little b, on March the 14th, 2024, Chakahooka is being smoked within the establishment. I also find for a violation of Rule 4.16 on March the 14th, 2024, marijuana being smoked within the establishment. I assess a $1,500 fine for a rule, violation of Rule 3.12, $1,500 for Rule 3.08 little a, $1,500 uh, fine for Rule 3.09 b, and $1,500 fine for Rule 4.16. And you have 30 days to pay. And and um, I, I need you to take to heart what I said, because we were being lenient with what we did today. We did hear your concerns. Um, they are on our radar. We see the violations. So I just want to know you were heard today, OK? Ms. Russell. I thought it was for the record. Board Exhibit 1, violation report, Inspector Jordan. Exhibit number 2, photos 2 through 8. And Exhibit number 3, request to revoke from Bay Action Baybrook. Community dated 6 25 Thank you. Next case. Peter Chung, Shin Dai Gay, Inc., trading as Smitty's Liquors, 1044 South Charles Street, Class A, beer, wine, and liquor license, violation of Rule 4.05, Little B. Please come forward. You please raise your right hand and identify yourself first for the record. Peter Chung. Okay. Do you swear or affirm on this penalty for you that the answers that you give and the statements that you make will be the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Is this an admission or are you challenging it? Admission. Okay. All right. Can you tell us what happened? And identify yourself. Inspector Brown for the Baltimore City Liquor Board. Um, on that Sunday, 421, I was in the area answering a 311 call. So I parked outside on Charles Street. And from my peripheral, I looked over and I seen somebody coming out of the Smitty's Liquor. So I walked over and I walked inside and I talked to the gentleman, identified as Jeremy Lee Chapman. And he was, and I asked him, I said, can I see your license? And he said, I don't know where they at. I said, well, I know where they at. They up here. I said, are you aware that you are not to be open on a Sunday? He said, I was open for the last couple Sundays. I said, well, Sir, I'm letting you know, you cannot open on a Sunday. And I said, you need to turn them lights out and you need to close ASAP. So I did my um, investigation and I wrote my report and I, and I told him, I said, well, I'm gonna violate you for opening on a Sunday. And he closed up and I left the premises and I sat outside for a while. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, uh, Mr. Chung. So, so what's going on? Um, you know you're not supposed to be open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good morning, board. Um, just want to apologize for taking up the board's time with this matter. Uh, it was the end of the first quarter for the year, and that's when we usually do our yearly inventory. And then we had to do it on Sundays because we don't want any sales coming through. But as the inspector said, she saw someone come through, um, come outside. And I never told my employee to not do a sale. So I guess he just did it anyway. So I take complete responsibility for that. And in the eight years that we've been there, this has never happened before. So going forward, I will make sure to say there will be no sales in the days that we're open doing inventory. And the reason why the door was not locked was, I mean, I just feel it's safer for the employees doing the inventory for them to be able to get out. Okay. And you've had that conversation with all of your employees, is yes. that correct? Yes. Any questions from the commission? No question. No. Yeah. I, I see that you haven't had any other violations and this is the first one. So um yeah, based on the testimony given today, the violation report, um, I do find that there was a violation of rule four point zero five small b on April twenty first, two thousand and twenty four, and it's selling alcohol on a Sunday. Um because 
there are no other violations. It seems like you stepped up and took responsibility and also took steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. I'm going to issue a $150 fine and give you 30 days of pay. Thank you. Yes, based on materials and testimony provided today, I also vote to agree with the chair's findings a violation of Rule 4.05 small b with a fine of $150. Based on the testimony given today, I find for a violation of Rule 4.05 little b on April 21st, 2024 for selling alcoholic beverages on a Sunday. Thank you and good luck I to you. I also agree with the uh, $150 fine, 30 days to pay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck to you, Ms. Russell. I close it for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Violation Report, Inspector Brown. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Jeffrey Danek, Holy for Holies, Inc., trading as Holy for Holies, 908 through 12 West 36th Street, Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license. Violation of Rule 3.08, Little A. Violation of Rule 4.07, Little A. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kanensky representing the licensees. Good morning. Mm. Um, is anybody going to testify? Is this an admission? So I'll make an admission and I'll try to take the path of least resistance here. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, um, what, what day did, did you guys get there? Can you step up, please? I'm sorry. Um, uh, Inspector Tuttle, Baltimore City Liquor Board, on 4 6 at approximately 11.52. Inspector Chris, Chief Inspector Chris Mallis instructed myself, Inspector Jordan Washington, to investigate an anonymous complaint received at 809 to 1236th Street at the establishment known as Holy Friolis for hundreds of people outside. I arrived at approximately 12.10 and I observed approximately 50 people outside and they were all standing around drinking at approximately 12.30 myself, Jordan and Inspector Washington made contact with the night manager, Mr. Burden Jankowski and made him aware of the complaint and it told him that he would be issued a violation for people not seated outside and being served. Okay. Um, after you witnessed this, did you give them any instruction? Did they comply with any of your instruction? Uh, we stayed there for a little while. Um, Mr. Jankowski did go outside. Um, we had to get to another call at that time, so we didn't stay around too long, but the people were still milling around outside drinking and standing when we had left. But we did instruct him that all people should be seated outside and served. Okay. All right. Mr. Kodinsky? Yeah, the, this um, particular licensee has been here since 2012. Has not had any violations been here the first time. They're having a lot of problems starting from COVID where people thought they could be outside. And then outside dining, you have three, two tops. It's a small, but people have a tendency to go outside and mill around. Uh, both the licensee and the manager here have, have taken proactive steps that are starting to post. And I'll make you this. Okay. We're indicating that people are not allowed, uh, and it's on all the um, doors and then inside to go outside with um, uh, drinks and be out there and drinks. It's sometimes it's hard telling people, but now they've been they take uh, steps to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, they've been having a problem. There've been a lot of um, anonymous complaints they've been having in the last week or so. The fire department's been here three times for overcrowding, no overcrowding. The police department came, there comes to uh, whoever is in the neighborhood. But this did happen, so I'm not mm -hmm. trying to say it didn't happen. But I think they've taken the steps now to um, uh, let everybody know, and they're going to have um, the manager's going to be near the door at all times. Okay. So is, is this going to be a, is this a staffing issue, uh, being able to, uh, if you're going to say something? It, it, it was. At that time, there were more, a lot of people in there. They were all going at it at one time. It wasn't something that happened, you know, every every day. And the manager was not at near the doorway where he should have been. Now he's going to be at the make sure he's at the door. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned the, door, the manager there. Okay. All right. Well, I don't see any other violations in the past. It seems like steps have been taken to to um, fix things. Any questions from the other commissioner? No. It seems yeah. that they uh, were proactive and took care of the situation in hand. Mm-hmm. No questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, based on the proffer made by counsel, the violation report and the testimony given, 
um, by the inspector, and also the um, exhibits that were just admitted. Um, I do find that there was a violation of Rule 3.08A and um, failing to comply with the BMZA requirements that all the patrons should be seated for dining and a violation of the rules 4.07A um, and that's allowing the patrons to leave the premises with alcoholic beverages um, due to the steps that were taken I believe um, that this organization is back on the path that they were before um, so we had to issue a nominal fine of $200 um, let me revise that I'll, I'll issue a fine of $100 per violation, so the total fine will be $200, um, and I'll give you 30 days to pay. Yes, based on materials and testimony provided today and from the attorney, I also vote to agree with the chair's findings, a violation of all 3.08 small a, a fine of $100, also a violation of all 4.07a with a fine of $100. Based on the testimony given by the inspector and profit given by the attorney and the picture that was submitted for the review, I also find for a violation of Rule 3.08, little A on April the 6th, 2024, allowing patrons to leave the premises with alcoholic beverages. I also agree with the fine of $100 per violation, 30 days to pay. Okay, Ms. Russell. I call Zippers for the record. Board of Zippers 1, violation report, Inspector Tudhope. Board of Zippers 2, photos 1 through 6. Thank you so much. You. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. All right. Muna Karki, Karki LLC, trading as Broadway Discount Liquors, 628 South Broadway, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, violation of th Rule 3.08B. Please come forward. Nice to see you. Good hey. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. All right. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, pro tem, uh, commissioners, it's okay. a pleasure. Yeah, is this going to be admission? or This will be on? respectfully a denial. Be but, very quick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, everybody raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm on the penalty of perjury that the answer that you give and statements that you make to be the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth? I do. Okay. Let's go ahead. Agent Chase, on, a pro on April the 9th, 2024 at approximately 1.15, I, Agent Chase, and Agent Clark responded to a complaint per Chief Christomelis when we arrived at Sushi Bruce Yeah, located at 1634 Allison Ann. We observed a part of the alley was clean and free of debris. The other part had overflowing trash with boxes, televisions, neon signs, and other items. At this time, we spoke with the licensee, Bruce Lee, and, we inform and he informed us that the trash in the alley um, was, excuse me, the trash in the alley was, in fact, Broadway discount liquors. And also that the alley is a shared alley between a residential property, property and two other businesses. Upon me and Agent Clark's further investigation, we saw that there was old liquor receipts with um, Broadway Liquors address on them. We conducted a full, full routine inspection at Broadway Discount and we spoke with the licensee. And we told him that he would be receiving a, he would be receiving a violation for overflowing trash. Okay, so Agent Chase. Yes. Well, any questions before? Um, yeah, briefly, um, you testified that you, and put in your report that um, there were boxes, right? Yes. And there was a t multiple TVs? No, I said there was multiple overflowing. It was multiple uh, boxes. No, no, I see televisions with an S. It was a television. Okay. It, it so was two TVs. Two it TVs. actually was two monitors. Oh. All right, and then neon signs. What kind of neon signs? Um, the signs that most liquor stores hang up with the, the writing on them. Here and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, and those things, um, you know anything about those things? No. Okay. Um, and... It looks like it was almost, it was bulk trash mixed with regular trash. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Just one small question. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Did you take a picture? Yes. That's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. No, no, I'm excited. <laughs> so, the, so the pictures that are in our documents here um, are of the alley. Yes. It was under the staircase. On the on their property and the residential property. Mm -hmm. 
Counselor. Um, yeah, I have nothing further for this witness. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're done. So go ahead. Move forward with your case. Okay, we'll move forward. Um, I'll try to make this by proffer. I just want to show you first the alley on any given day. This photo was taken on Monday. It is an extremely narrow alley. It's actually shared by three businesses and a fourth that's coming online. Um, it's a little bit of a fire hazard. I mean, it could be considered a little bit of a fire hazard, these giant bins. So first and foremost, um, the difference between this business and the other now three businesses on this very sharing this tiny alley is that they're the only one that has a private enclosed area because they have a deck on the second floor of this building. Um, 628 Broadway has its own enclosed area. And I'll show you these pictures. And these aren't, um, quite frankly, glamour shots, to say the least. You see these, all this recycling piled up on the inside of the property. So the refuse, any trash generated by this store is never supposed to be even in the alley until it's time for trash pickup. Now you have to understand the tenant across the way, uh, the one who was involved in this, he runs a sushi place. And a sushi place has lots of solid waste. I mean, like a home, you've got raw fish, you've got coffee grinds, you've got regular trash. A liquor store doesn't have regular trash. A liquor store has 99% recycling. And so that's why you see the type of trash, the type of materials that they have in their backyard. It's all boxes. And I mean, there's one bottle there, but everything else is just boxes. So the idea that stuff belonging to the business is beyond this little fence. And you can see the fence in both pictures, so to, to show you where the private area is. So that said, I've asked Ms. Parkey, they haven't thrown any neon signs away. Those neon signs are expensive and are often returned to distributors when need be. Um, they don't have any televisions in the liquor store, so they didn't throw away televisions. Um, now, something fun, you know, because we're is what we do for a living. <laughs> so we have a rule that I guess we just did a revision of the rules here, but next time we want to put this one on the list because rule 3.08B only talks about garbage and refuse material. It doesn't talk about recyclable items. There are legal definitions that say that recyclable items are items that are not intended to be in the stream of solid waste disposal. So. Recycling does not equal garbage or other refuse material. That said, um, my client believes that there was some kind of illegal dumping that went on behind the place. I don't, uh, di don't you know, disbelieve, I believe that the inspectors, when they're looking at this detritus, this obvious bulk garbage, the kind of thing you call 311 and have the city pick up, you don't just leave it there. They, some of these invoices that they talk about presumably had flown out of the um, their private area and might have landed next to these TVs and neon signs, but they absolutely did not deny um, leaving garbage like that, having producing garbage like that, let alone leaving it in the alley. So, so are, you say, that, are you saying that none of the items that were in that space was your clients? Not the, even nothing, the kettle nothing, one box? Nothing that, in the report. Televisions, neon signs. I don't know if a box had gotten out. I don't know if somebody had gotten in that space, but they simply, and they don't have a camera back there, so they weren't able to find out if someone was sleeping in their <laughs> little cubby hole there or not. But um, it's just, it's unusual. We don't get too many littering only charges. You've obviously heard yeah. some more serious charges just this morning alone. So with that, we'll submit, um, but they don't believe that they contributed to this incident. Thank you. Okay, Agent Chase, did you have something to say about the receipts and some of the items that were in there? Yes, so um, when we actually did our full routine inspection, he told us that they were cleaning out their basement. And who was he? Um, the licensee. The licensee told um, us of um, Broadway Liquors that he was cleaning out his basement. And also the alleyway is actually locked. Um, the guy from Bruce Lee, well, Bruce Lee, he actually had to let, let us in with the key to see the alley. Okay. Anything else? No, thank you. Right. Any questions? Yeah, who, who's regards to this this picture with these cardboard boxes and folded cartons? 
Whom do they belong to? Is it your, your client? Yes, inside that, that uh, two by four off area. Yes, that, that is the waste that is generated by 620. So it's generated by them. So how do they disperse it? I mean, do they have, it, it, this is all recycled. Right, and I, I don't know the answer to that. Can she answer that? Her? Yeah, well, I'll be happy to do that. We did already. Oh, we did, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. It's Muna Carthy. Hi, I'm Muna Karki. When it's a recycle day, my employee will take it out, and then the morning, the recycled people will take it out. So the city picks it up? Yes. Okay, all right. Oh, I'm easy. The debris in the alleyway, in that public right of way. Hold on. Thank you. Every regardless of who put the debris there, do you think you should be responsible if it lands on your side of your responsibility? I mean, it's a question. That was a question for you. Yes. Yes. So when the inspector talked to someone in the establishment, and they clearly explained to her that they was cleaning out the basement, that's what she said. If I'm wrong, correct me, please. No. All right. And the trash was put out there. It's your responsibility once you put it out. If it lands on any part of that right of way, that you're responsible for, regardless of how you got there. That's law. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No question. Well, uh, based on the violation report, the proffer made by counsel, testimony given, and the um, exhibits that were admitted today, I do think that there was a violation of Rule 3.08B. Um, I understand counsel's argument. Um, but there are items in the evidence that was provided um, prior to the hearing that we've looked through, and there's um, also evidence given by the inspectors that some of the trash there was connected with the um, licensee. I do find a violation of Rule 3.08B. I do see that there was um, violations in the past, I see a few um, small violations. This doesn't have anything to do with any of your past violations. I understand that um, you have, you're attempting to keep that alley clean and keep things behind that fence area. So um, I think that a nominal um, fee for this violation of $200 uh, would be sufficient with 30 days to pay. Yes, based with two of the testimony provided today from the attorney, I vote to agree with the chair's findings of violation of all 3.08B with a fine of $200. Based on the testimony given, proffered by the attorney, and especially the conversation the inspector had with the, uh, the person of record, I find for violation of rule 3.08, those would be on April the 9th, 2024, trash and debris found in the alley. I assess a $200 fine with 30 days to pay. Mm -hmm. Great job, Council. Um, nothing else, Ms. Russell? Recall uh, the SIP is for the record. Board of SIP Applying, Violation Report, Inspector Chase, two photos, three photo, four invoice dated 11 221, five invoice dated 8 621, and six photos, one through 10. Good luck. Thank you all. Have a great July 4th. Good, seeing you again, Good to Ms. see you. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care. Thanks, guys. Chin Suk Moon, River Moon Inc., trading as G and T Liquor, 2048 Wilkins Avenue, Class A, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License Violation of Rule 4.05 Little B. Please come forward. Good morning. Please identify yourself. Chin Moon. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. We swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury the advances that you give and the statements that you make to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay. Is this going to be admission to the violation? It's going to be admission. All right. Can you give me, can we, it's a brief statement of what happened on that day. Um, well, on, good morning, Baltimore City Liquor Board, Inspector Brown. On 426 um, 04, I was conducting um, inspections for the 10 o'clock um, establishments over in the southwest area. So when I came to two, uh, 2048, which is GT Liquor, I observed um, patrons coming out with bags. So I went in, introduced myself, and advised um, the gentleman that was at um, 
one in the bar, Tay Moon, I advised him that at 10 o'clock the establishment was to be closed. He said he just wanted to wait on his last customer. I advised him I was going to issue a violation, and I wrote the violation and left okay. without incident. Did they stop serving after that point? He did. He closed. He, he, he turned off all the lights and closed and locked the doors. Had you been back to the location after this and any other issues? I haven't, but one of my coworkers have. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. My questions. Anything you want to say about that violation? Yes. Uh, my employer told me that uh, he had a medical appointment the next day, so he was preparing stock the night before, and he didn't realize the time has passed. And also, when the customer came in, he walked in. He, uh, my employee told the customer that the store was closed. He didn't even wait in any customer. Have you talked to your employees yeah, about? I already told my employee that don't stocking up around closing time. Okay. Have you talked to your other employees? You have other employees Just also. One, one employee. Just one employee. Okay. So, all right. Any other questions from? Of course. I do have one. I, I think I heard something. I hope I didn't. Your employee was doing some stock yeah. work, and he was finished selling liquor for the day. Yeah, I heard that, but I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm and not, he wasn't. I wasn't that. Okay. Why didn't he lock the door when you normally when you, if your door is open, you open for business. But if you close your door, then you have to open. get out of the store at the front and shutting down. Okay. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what was going on, but right, thank we you. don't have any lock inside. Of thank the door. you. So you only can lock it from the outside. Yes, is that why? Yes. All right. So and you I said you made. You've talked to your employee and that yeah. this is not going to happen again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Based on the testimony given today, um, the violation <coughs> report also, I do find that there was a violation of Rule 4.05B on April 21st, 2024, um, for selling alcohol past 10 p.m. I do see that you um, don't have a history of violations in the past. It seems like you took the steps um, to this may not happen in the future, and I hope it doesn't. Um, I will issue a nominal fee of $200 and give you 30 days of pay. Yes, based on materials and testimony provided today, I also vote to agree with the Chair's findings, the violation of Rule 4.05, small b, and with a fine of $200. Based on the testimony given today, I find for a violation of Rule 4.05, little b, on April the 21st, 2024, <coughs> Selling alcoholic, selling alcohol past <coughs> 10 p.m. I issued a fine of $200 with 30 days to pay. Thank you, Ms. Russell. I call this for the record. Board at Civic One, Valley Show Court, Inspector Brown. And good luck to you. Jermaine Reese Lowry and Mayher Singh, New MJ Singh LLC, training as Brooklyn Liquors, 3525 through 27 South Hanover Street. Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, violation of rule 4.20 little c, two double little i, violation of rule 3.09 little b, violation of rule 4.17 little b. Please come forward. For the record, uh, Melvin J. Kineski representing the licensee. It's going to be an admission. It's going to be admission. Okay. All right. Go ahead and tell us what happened on that day. <coughs> Inspector Taro, Baltimore City Liquor Board. On 4-30-24 at approximately 5-15, I, Inspector Taro, was conducting a routine inspection at 3525 South Hanover Street, known as Brooklyn Liquors. Upon entering the establishment, I identified myself and tried to enter the, the tavern area of the establishment. After multiple um, tries, I was led inside. Once inside, I observed the bar area to be covered in food and food containers. I observed clothes, underwear, and personal hygiene products on the chairs and tables. I observed there to be a sleeping cot in the corner. I also observed mattresses in the utility room. The stock was being stored on the floor and what appeared to be a kitchen set up behind the bar area. I also observed the three compartment sink to be empty, dirty dishes in the hand washing sink. I made um, contact with the licensee, Mr. Singh, and advised him that the tavern should be open and operating at all times. 
when the package goods is open. Mr. Singh stated that he did not know this and would keep it open from now on. I, Inspector Tudop, issued Mr. Singh with a copy of the rules and regulations of the Liquor Board and told him that he would receive a violation left without further incident. Okay. What happened this um, gentleman bought the property at auction. It took forever to get everything straightened out and he finally got the license transferred. So you can see the license was transferred about a year ago. It has no violations. He had a person there who he thought was helping him when the person was not helping him in the place, trying to keep it up because of the problem, which he since gotten rid of, and he's rectified the situations. And I can show you pictures of the fact that um, he had taken care of the area, the bar is uh, open and stocked, uh, the three compartment sink is um, uh, filled, and in the stock area, uh, everything there is above um, six inches above the floor. Um, thank you. Yeah, I've seen it. You know, I think that was a lesson that he should not have with somebody that he knows to help out and, and do things in the place. And he's got to have better control over what you know, people are in there on it. But uh, he understands and not all of them uh, packages because they're sold over the, the bar area there that you can see. Okay. Has anybody gone back to look or checked on the um, Inspector Washington, re-inspector on 5924, and a satisfactory routine inspection was done. Okay. Sorry. Seems like everything was, was handled. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? No. No. Okay. Uh, based on the <coughs> violation report, uh, the proffer made by counsel and testimony given today and the evidence that was admitted today, I do find that there was a violation of and admission made by counsel today that there was a violation of rule 4.20 C little two little eyes. Okay. Fargo, does community members, do you guys want to say anything? Do you want to testify in anything? If you'd like to say something, you can come on before I, I make the ruling. Um. Again, my name is Chris Bittner. I'm with Action Baybrook. Yes. I just wanted to, uh, we have a serious problem in Brooklyn with prostitution. And if this is aiding and abetting, I don't know. I'm not making any accusations. It needs to be addressed. Okay. And I, just have, I do have a question. Were you here on the date of this incident? And no, did you I was see anything on April 30th on that day? No, I was not there. Right. Okay. We do hear your concerns, though, about the neighborhood. Yes. Anything else for you? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, again, I do find a violation of Rule 4.20 C double I, um, failing to open a tavern uh, for on-site consumption when the package good area is open and operating, in violation of Rule 3.09 B, um, also failing to properly utilize a three-compartment sink, in violation of Rule 4.17 B. Um, with the alcoholic beverages stored on the floor. Um, for each of those violations, I do um, issue a $150 fine for each of the violations and give 30 days of pay, so a $150 fine for first, second, and third violation. Yes, based on material to testimony provided today from the attorney, I also vote to approve the chair findings of violation of all 4.20 small c with a fine of $150, violation of all 3.09 small b with a fine of $150, and violation of all 4.17 b with a fine of $150. Based on the profit given by the attorney, testimony by the inspector, I find for a violation of rule 4.20 little c, uh, two little i's, on April the 30th, 2024, reference failing to open tavern area for on-site consumption when packaged goods area is kept, I'm sorry, is open and operating, excuse me. I find for a violation of rule, also for I find for a violation of rule 3.09 loaded B on April the 30th, 2024, failing to properly utilize the three compartment sink. I also find for a violation of Rule 4.17, little B, on April the 30th, 2024, alcoholic beverages stored on the floor. I find for $200 per, I'm sorry, $150 per violation, 
and you have 30 days to pay. Ms. Russell. I call about the, I'm sorry, the exhibits for the record. Uh, exhibit number one, violation report, Inspector Tudhole. Two, photos one through five. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. I apologize in advance if I mispronounce your name. Ola Tunde, Dipolo, Dipolu, Good Budget LLC, trading as Club Bellissimo, 1001 through 03 East Pratt Street, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. Violation of Rule 3.09, Little B, and violation of Rule 3.12, please come forward. For the record, uh, Melvin J. Kineski representing the licensee. Um, I just have a couple quick questions. I'm not really, the, with regard to the hookah, I'm not making an admission on the hookah with an explanation and just to the loud music, I just have a couple of questions of the um, inspector, inspectors, plural. Okay. Go ahead, inspectors, can you go ahead and give us an idea of what was happening on April 27, 2024? April the 27th, 2024, um, I, Inspector Brown, responded to a 311 call for um, Club Bellissimo. I parked a block down. So upon, when I walked up, upon my, you know, walking up, I can feel a bass coming from the wall. So when I walked in, I looked at the DJ, then I walked to the bar, and I spoke to um, the, the club employee, which was, excuse my, if I say it wrong, Cheek Diop, and I spoke to him and I told him about the um, complaint and I told him the bass was too loud, the music was too loud. And uh, I, when I walked in, I observed multiple um, hookah things and people smoking. So I spoke, when I spoke to the manager, I told him, I said, you can't smoke in here and you have to turn the bass down. So I told him, I said, I'm gonna write for a violation for hookah and I'm gonna write you a violation for loud noise. And I wrote the violation and I left. Okay, any questions? Just a question, is it, it, the standard you're using, you're not using any decibel standards, is that correct? Correct. All right, and there was no violation from the health department? Correct. And, there, and on either one of those? Okay, and they were cooperative with you? He was. <clears throat> okay, I have another question. Okay. This is my argument is that there's really no standard on the on the uh, noise violation here um, used to be the board had decibel readings. I mean, Mr. Jones probably remembers that. Um, and then if you violate it, because there's questions, you have some ambient noise versus noise. And um, the question is, uh, it was a, uh, a complaint. The hookah, there seems to be a big misunderstanding on hookah. And it comes down to be, comes down to be a cultural thing where uh, people from various cultures he was never told by the health department he couldn't have it. I explained to him, you cannot have charcoal hookah. You can have electronic hookah. That's not what they had here. So the electronic hookah doesn't have an open flame. This has, so they have got to did away with all the um, charcoal, and they also are going to monitor the, the sound a little bit better than they were in the past. Okay. And, and you said you heard the sound from down the block, because that's yes. what you said before you got there. Yes. All right. And the sound has... Um, The, the music's not being played as loud. Is that what's? Is that what your client yeah, is saying now? The question now? versus you know what they, is it? What is loud? What is the standard? Like when you, just as an analogy, I, when you driving your car, you can be charged with spinning wheels, but there's no standard. Does the wheel spin once? Did it spin twice? Was it wet or dry? Here they would normally have a decibel reading if it you know between treble and, and bass. Uh, you know, it was a song. It's all about the bass. You know, you heard that. And the question is whether that really is a violation or anything. So that, that's just Ms. really a technical argument. Mr. Chair, if I could just add for a moment, there is a provision in the law that allows for a noise violation in addition to a, a certain decibel reading. If you can hear the music 50 feet away, that is a violation of the noise standard. Yeah. Well, my question is that if, if you can hear, if you could hear it was a baseball game and it was on and it was on real loud, is that a violation? People it watch the Orioles play. Mr. Kadensky, it I refers understand. to music. And, well, and but they're playing, you know, charge, da -da 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 -da, charge, and it goes through the whole thing, and Mr. Wiz is whizzing everybody, and they're playing music. I mean, it's... I, I understand, I understand, okay. but I, I think... i got to make the argument. I, I, I mean, I like your argument. I think that you, you did a great job for your client. <laughs> That'll be us uh, refreshing. <laughs> 
I, I think you did a great job for going. That's why I asked the follow-up question to the um, inspector and how far away was she, and I, and I think that her experience uh, from doing this for a, a little while, she knows if that music was a little bit too loud. Um, I do like that you stated that your client is monitoring the, the, the volume now, and, um, and, and we shouldn't see him here in the future. I don't see any um, other violations from him. Um, I think this probably was enough to get to the attention. Any questions from any of the commissioners? No. I make my no. Ruling. Okay. All right. So I do see that there was a violation, and I cite you a violation on Rule 3.09B with the charcoal hookah being smoked within the establishment. Um, and on that one, I'll issue um, only a $150 fine given. Um, now that he knows the rules and knows that he can't do that, if you come back here another time and they're smoking hookah inside, you can't say you didn't know what was going on, and it's going to be a completely different story. Um, this is the first time nominal fee for that. And also on the same thing when it comes to the violation of Rule 3.12, um, the loud music, I'll also issue a $150 fine since it is your first violation um, and give you 30 days of pay. But you know now to make sure that you monitor the sound and no more hookah, okay? Yes, uh, based on material testimony uh, about the day from the attorney, I also vote to approve the chair's findings, a violation of rule 3.09 small b with a fine of $150, and violation of rule 3.12 uh, with a fine of $150. Based on the testimony given and the inspection, excellent report. I have to find for a violation of Rule 3.09B, Builder B, on April the 27th, 2024, Shaka Hooker being smoked within the establishment. I also find for a violation of Rule 3.12 on April the 27th, 2024, loud music. I assess a $50 fine for each violation. You have 30 days to pay. Okay, Ms. Russell. Medical exhibits for the record. Board is a bit one, violation report, Inspector Brown. Two, service request summary report dated 4 27 24. Three, service request summary dated 4 27 24. Four, service request summary dated 4 26 24. And five, service request summary dated 4 26 24. Thank you, Mr. Cadenza. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Gabrahan Gabreski and Daniel Tekelmerium. DNJ Beer and Wine Inc. trading as <clears throat> excuse me DNJ Beer and Wine 3600 West Garrison Avenue, Class A Beer and Light Wine License Violation of Maryland Alcoholic Beverages and Cannabis Article Section 12-2007 Little I. Please come forward. Once again, for the record, Melvin J. Kadensky, 320 North Charles Street. I'm representing the uh, applicant, the licensee. Excuse me. Is this going to be an admission also? Uh, it, it's not. It's not? Okay. Have everybody raised their right hand. To swear or affirm on the front of the perjury that the answers that you give and statements that you make the truth the whole truth and not the truth. Okay. Okay. Can you step forward and tell us what happened on May 3rd, 2024? Inspector Tuttle, Baltimore City Liquor Board. On May 3rd, 2024, at approximately 11.08 p.m., um, Liquor Board Inspectors Tuttle and Jordan, along with the Social Club Task Force, consisting of the Baltimore City Fire Department and Baltimore City Housing, conduct an investigation at the establishment known as D&J Beer and Wine, located at 3600 Garrison Avenue. The task force found the establishment open and operating. I, Inspector Tuttle, made um, contact with the licensee as identified by his driver's license and made him aware that the task force would be conducting a compliance check of the establishment. I, Inspector Tuttle, asked to view his liquor license. Upon review of his liquor license, I found that the establishment hours of operation was restricted from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. I asked Mr. Gabrizi if he was aware that he was operating outside his permitted hours of operation. He stated he, did, he was not selling any alcohol and was only operating as a convenience store after 10 p.m. I, Inspector Tudup, informed him that he was not allowed to operate after 10 p.m. and showed him his liquor license stating this. I instructed Mr. the licensee to close and he complied. We left the establishment without any further 
Let me just ask you very quickly. There were no sales being made when you came in and you didn't try to purchase any product, beer or wine, is that correct? No. And there were no customers in there buying beer or wine? No. And he does have a food operation there, a convenience store, is that correct? Yes. And um, when you go in to buy the, the place that you buy behind plate glass, he puts it in a turnstile and you, and you get your product, correct? Everything was locked behind doors. Behind, yeah. Behind. So at that point there, you were able to witness that he did have um, food for a convenience store in the back. He does, yeah. Okay. All right, and then you're saying you has to, he has to close. He has to cease alcoholic beverage, beer and wine operation by 10 o'clock, correct? He has to cease operation as uh, according to his license. To alcohol, the only thing you have control over is the beer and wine license. He's a liquor establishment. He has to abide by Beer and wine liquor. establishment. Beer and wine establishment. Yeah. Beer and wine establishment. I go with what's on the liquor license. Okay, but you would have to if we mean operating. Someone would have to come in buy buy something. Nobody bought anything after ten o'clock. No, nope, but he was open and operating. We witnessed people leaving. How do you know he was operating? Operating means that you would come in and have to buy something. If you came in and say, "Give me a box of Cheerios," he's certainly not selling you a bottle of wine. He would need permission from the board to stay open past those hours to, to sell, sell Cheerios. To sell Cheerios? Yes. Okay, that'll be a first. M Mr. Chair, if I may. I just have one question yeah. for an inspector. So you, you did see people leaving. We did see people leaving, and his hours of operation are on a picture I provided on the door. I, I see that right here yeah. in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. And those are patrons that were leaving the... the yes, sir. And, mm -hmm. and it was after hours? He also um, showed patrons away while we were there. We made him close while we were there, and he... People were trying to enter the establishment. And what were the people leaving with? Nothing, because we okay. made no, no. it close. Said it. Those old people leaving. Were they have Cheerios or did they have a dad bags? I have no idea okay. what's in the bags. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, the section that the licensee was charged with <laughs> is after hours activity prohibited in licensed <laughs> premises. Bless you. Um, the law provides that a licensed pre premises shall end all operations at the closing hour. The law does provide for several um, very limited exceptions, which this licensee does not qualify, nor does he have. Um, Thank you very much. So my argument is that you cannot, if it was a gasoline station that had beer and wine, you can't stop them from selling gasoline. As long as they're not selling beer and wine, and profit in my client says 80% of his sales come from being a convenience and they're behind glass, so you be able to sell your convenience products. But if you came in after 10 o'clock and you bought a, a six pack of Coors Light, then he's wrong. But you didn't have that in this case. And, and just one more, one more thing to put in there. This law has been upheld for, uh, and has been determined to be constitutional. Uh, it's constitutional for alcohol, but not for Cheerios. Yeah, yeah, we, okay. but, but you do see the, the business hours that were posted, and your client was operating after those business, posted business hours. But that's his business hours. Okay. No, no I'm, I'm saying is that. But you he, did see that, though. Yeah, he, he, mm -hmm. he can pick his hours that he wants to open to sell convenience store products, but you're right, and he's, for now, he's going to post there no sales of beer and wine after 10 o'clock. Question is, can he sell his Cheerios at 1030? I think he can. Otherwise, that's an undue restraint a trade with, you know, the board only has control over beer and wine, alcohol, and cannabis. Why you have cannabis, I have no idea, but you do. And um, that's my argument. Make, I have to make the argument. Yes. You, you had a question, Commissioner? Yes. I mean, it says here, if I'm reading correctly, that uh, it's supposed to be till 10 o'clock is closing time. Am I correct? For mm -hmm. sale of beer and wine. I don't... It does not say that on your business hour. It just says... It just says close, close at 10. Yeah. And he's got, when his picture, it's got, he's got till on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, he's open till 11 p.m. He's supposed to be already, he's supposed to close at 10. And for alcohol. You can get your Cheerios at 10.30. I don't know about your Cheerios. I just don't. Can I just make, can I just clarify yes, that? Yes, um, go ahead. Chief Chris Amalas. So just like uh, an A cannot open on Sundays and sell chips and a can of soda, just like a BD7 can't stay open after 2 a.m. and sell pancakes without the permission of the board, 
Same thing with this license. If you'd like to stay open without the permission of the board, he can obviously forfeit his license, his beer and wine license, and sell only Cheerios. Um, however, he needs the permission of the board to stay open after the hours of operation if he sells alcohol. Thank you. But Thank you see you. the license that you grant him says grocery store. So you, it was granted as a grocery store. So you can't say you can give him a license with a, with a beer and wine and grocery. You gave that to him. So he does have it. What you can say, and I'm saying you, I'm using the euphemist you, uh, that you know he can't sell beer and wine, and there's no proof that he sold beer and wine after 10 o'clock um, in this case. So I think it's a, uh, a de minimis argument here that he was out open and operating selling beer and wine after 10 o'clock, because we have no proof of that. It's the, as we say among the Latin scholars, the difference between the allegata and the approbata. That which is alleged, and then that which was not proved in the case. Now the rest of my case. Okay. Do you have any more questions? No, I just no, don't. I, I think we're supposed to close at a certain time. I mean, I, I'm going into the weeds. When I had to bark, I had to close at 2 o'clock. I can't keep it open if I'm going to sell potato chips and gum and stuff like that. I mean, you have to close, you, you know. Any questions? No, I have okay. absolutely none. I, although I do appreciate the argument made by counsel, um, uh, based on the violation report, um, argument made by counsel um, through a proffer, um, the testimony given um, today, I, I do believe that there was a violation of um, Maryland Alcohol and Beverage Cannabis Article 12-2007A. Um, open and operating past a 10 p.m. closing date. Um, I think that the the um, rules are are clear on that. I understand the argument of the difference between selling alcohol and selling other items on on that date. I think that it is a, um, something that has been already addressed in the past. Um, but I do think there was a violation on that date. Um, I do think that um, now that your client knows that he can't do that or some changes have to be made for him to do that, that we will um, issue a fine of $150 for that violation um, and give him 30 days of pay. Yes, based on materials and testimony provided today, I vote to approve the chair's findings of violation of Maryland Alcoholic Beverage and Cannabis Article 12-2007 small a with a fine of $150. Based on testimony given, profit by the attorney, I also find for a violation of Maryland Alcoholic Beverage and Cannabis Article Subsection 12 2007 little a on May 7, 2024, open and operate operating past 10 p.m. Ms. Russell. I cause it is for the record. Uh, Board Exhibit One, violation report. Inspector Todd Hope. One second, one second. Did you say that? Yes. I fined for $150 for 30 days to pay. Okay. I think I jumped the gun on no, that no one. No problem. I took I like to call exhibits for the record. Board exhibit one, violation report, Inspector Tuttle. Council, thank you for your arguments. I, I heard it all, and um, thank you so much. Have you had any cannabis violations? <laughs> oh, no. The board? From the board? Well, we, could, we can discuss that off the record. No, no. Uh, I'm not, yeah, uh -huh. off the record. I'm saying um, it's interesting. I'm just wondering, you know, what will you do with a cannabis violation? Yeah, that's, you haven't had one. I don't think. No, that's the way that the article was, was put together. But um, I want to thank you. That was our last case. Yeah. Okay, We're still I'm sorry. on the record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I We're still on the record. Part after, I mean, it's, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> After we wrap up, um, <laughs> we can talk about this some more. Thank you guys very much. I think it's the last Yes, last sir. Case. There being no further business for this board, the board is now in recess uh, until Thursday, July 11th, 2024 at 1030. We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh.